How's it going, folks? I wanted to start by plugging uh, this book, which I'm still reading, and this is wonderful. It's a masterpiece. And, um, yeah, the autobiography of Mark Twain, we've been waiting a century for it to come out, and well worth the wait. And this is not a good book. <laughs> this is a lousy book. But unfortunately, that's what this series is about. We're reading the Book of Mormon from cover to cover. And I'm a good third of the way in, I think. Ah, I have never tried this. It is Dog Bite. Got a picture of Cerebus on it. Uh, Guardian of Hades. Seemed appropriate. Oh, that's good. That's really nice. Chapter 22 of the Book of Mosiah. And now... It came to pass that Ammon and King Limhi began to consult with the people how they should deliver themselves out of bondage. All of them? Is that what a king does? They consult with the people? This is such a democratic book in some ways. <laughs> and even they did cause that all the people uh, should gather themselves together. And this they did that they might have the voice of the people concerning the matter. <laughs> God bless America and the land of Zarahemla and the land of Nephi Lehi and shit. And we're going to get a couple new uh, kingdoms coming up. Wait for it. It's kind of got a sweetness to it. And it came to pass that they could find no way to deliver themselves out of bondage, except it were, were that they take their women and children and their flocks and their herds and their tents and depart into the wilderness. I mean, that worked for Lehi. It worked for Nephi when he got here and it started getting scared of his brothers who were getting sick of him. Uh, for the Lamanites, uh, being so numerous, it was impossible for the people of Limhi to contend with them, thinking to deliver themselves out of bondage by the sword. Uh, now, it came to pass that Gideon went forth and stood before the king. Last time that happened, it was a real comedy of errors, wasn't it? <laughs> different king. Different comedy, maybe. <sighs> and said unto him, Now, O king, thou hast hitherto hearkened unto my words many times when we uh, have been contending with our brethren, the Lamanites. And now, O king, if thou hast not found me to be an unprofitable servant, they love that phrase, don't they? You unprofitable servant. Yeah, you're not in a cult. Uh-uh. They're not trying to control your mind, you profitable servants. Yeah, they they can get a lot out of you. You're real useful. Profitable. <laughs> Isn't it nice to belong, to be owned Uh, or if thou hast hitherto listened to my words in any degree, and they have been of service to thee, get on with it. 
Even so, I desire that thou that thou wouldst listen to my words at this time, and I will be the thy servant and deliver this people out of bondage. It only took him two long-ass verses to get to the point. All this kingly formality. And the king granted unto him that he might speak. What was that he was just doing two verses ago? For the past two verses. He was just asking permission to speak, which takes a lot longer, doesn't it? And Gideon said unto him, Behold, the back pass through the back wall on the back side of the city. They're sneaking out the back, Jack. The Lamanites, or the guards of the Lamanites, by night are drunken. Therefore, let us send a proclamation among all the people that they gather together their flocks and herds that they may drive them into the wilderness by night. Get the flock out of here! <laughs> and I will go according to the, thy command and pay the last tribute of wine to the Lamanites. <sighs> and they will be drunken, and we will pass through the secret pass on the left of the camp when they are drunken and asleep. Sounds like a one of the bad episodes of Daniel Boone or something, you know? All right. They'll be drunk by nightfall, and then we'll get these bonds off and slip out. How many times has this, has this plot line been used? Did, did you invent it, Joseph Smith? Thus, we will depart with our women and our children, our flocks and our herds into the wilderness, and we will travel around the land of Shimlon. It's nice. I like it. Dog bite's never been so good. And it came to pass that the king hearkened unto the words of Gideon. And King Limhi caused that his flocks should gather their flocks together, and he sent the tribute of wine to the Lamanites. And he also sent more wine as a present unto them. <laughs> Get nice and drunk. Don't worry about us. No, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, either. <sighs> as a present unto them. And they did drink freely of the wine which King Limhi did send unto them. Should have got some wine for this one. I'd be missing out on this. And it came to pass that the people of King Limhi did depart by night into the wilderness with their flocks and their herds, and they went round about the land of Shimlam uh, in the wilderness and bent their course towards the land of Zarahimla, being led by Ammon and his brother, another knockoff of the Exodus. As a matter of fact, the whole early Mormon stories have kind of a knockoff for the Exodus. <coughs> I mean, how many times did they have to slip out in their wagons or sometimes just wheelbarrows and shit, dragging shit on <laughs> on travoys and stuff, you know, uh, out of one community into another one until they finally ended up in Salt Lake, where they're like, great, there's a lake, we'll have water. <laughs> No, it's a victory. Sorry. Somehow, it's a prophecy here. As a matter of fact, I think I did see something about a lake of salt, which they're not talking about the Dead Sea. They're talking about Salt Lake. <sighs> and they had taken their gold and silver and their precious things. So they learned from uh, Lehi in the early chapters of this book, this gold book. 
where he left all his shit and he had to keep going back to Jerusalem even though it's going to be destroyed any minute, any second. But it's, oh shit, I forgot to get uh, these records that belong to somebody else. Can you go just, like steal them from him or borrow them, buy them or just tell him we need him more than he does. It's worth his life. <sighs> and they could, uh, which they could carry, all the gold, silver and shit, and also their provisions with them into the wilderness, and they pursued their journey. And after being many days in the wilderness, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla, and joined Mosiah's people, and became his subjects. Nice. I lost my place. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it became his subjects. And it came to pass that Mosiah received them with joy. And also he received their records. And also the records which <laughs> the Jaredites had been found by the people of Limhi. You know, in that great land of dried bones and rusting steel swords from the Tower of Babel era, Genesis. Uh, I'm just saying. And now. Uh, it came to pass when the Lamanites had found that the people of Limhi had departed out of the land by night. They were hung over. No, just kidding. Um, that they sent an army into the wilderness to pursue them. And after they had pursued them two days, they could no longer follow their tracks. Therefore, they were lost in the wilderness. And thus ends this episode of Hansel and Gretel. No, I'm just kidding. Gideon and the gang and Lim High. And... <laughs> I'll see you guys in chapter 23. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you might be having.